the whole point of direct mail is to get in front of your farm, teach the people in front of you what you do, who you have and how you can help them. Hello, welcome to episode 192 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Christy Ball to talk all things direct mail. Her family has owned and operated LMB Printing for 50 years, and now as a licensed real estate professional herself, Christy is sharing her tips for making the most out of your next direct mail marketing campaign. From the type of messaging to the frequency of send, Christy explains how agents can achieve a higher return on investment and build a campaign that grows their lead pipeline. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you'll find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Be sure to click the link in the episode description to claim a free digital issue. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents Podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Christy Ball. And if you're interested in learning more about direct mail or how LMB printing can help you, I've included a link to their real estate specific offer in the episode description. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, uh, who you are and where you're at in the country. Absolutely. Um, my name is Christy Ball and I am located in New Jersey up in the Northeast. Awesome. What, uh, tell me a little bit about your real estate career, how you uh, got in it and how long you've been doing real estate. Sure. So it's an interesting story. Um, my family owns a commercial printing business. They have since I was three. And for the last 15 years or so, we have actually been producing direct mail for realtors and, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces um, for some of the biggest brands, you know, in the world. Um, so I became friends actually with one of the agents. She came in to the office and she said, I want to, I want to do direct mail with you. So this was a person I admire highly. She's a wonderful human being. So I wanted to make sure if we were going to work for her, that it was going to be an, an investment, which means it's not an expense. It's actually going to make her money or I didn't want her to do it. And I flat out told her that. So we talked about, you know, what might work, what what won't work. And so I, I said to her, there's so many agents where you are. Why would somebody work with you? You know, and after a long conversation, um, it came out that she had just gotten her senior um, designation, that she's really good with helping older people. You know, that was kind of her, the people she knew. She was a Rotarian. So I said, then that's what we're going to go with because we have to differentiate you. Why, sh why it's not going to work otherwise. So we designed for her and I am getting to the point of how I got into it, but we designed for her, um, a post three, three part postcard series and everything in the cards was about seniors. The imagery was seniors. We said, you know, should you move? You know, we kind of put it right out there. Like maybe you shouldn't move, you know, that maybe this, here's the plan. This is what I do anytime I'm dealing with a senior. And we picked her, her target where, where she lives and where she's known. And to make a long story short, she ended up, she claimed she got $25,000 in commission. So right then and there, I realized like, like what we're doing here, you know, really benefits these agents and the people they work with. So after years and years of this, I was, I have always obviously loved real estate as well. And I thought I should do this. I should do this too. My family life changed um, five years ago and it would be smart for me to, you know, get something else going. So it hasn't actually been that long for me. Um, I'm, I'm not even an agent two years, um, but I found that being an agent, I have even more information, you know, about their struggles and I'm even more convinced this, the way that they should do it. Right. So that's yeah. that's the gist of how I got into it. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, in these two years that you have been an agent, how have things been going and, and how have you been getting your name out there? I have to imagine that, uh, you know, the direct mail is, is definitely one of the avenues for that. Yeah. So um, 
I'm, I'm actually, I, when I first started, I didn't, I didn't, even though I, I was licensed, I didn't feel confident. So I was, I was kind of slow to getting started. I didn't want to be like, Hey, here I am. Everybody kind of come. And I was like, Oh, I want to make sure that I'm a blessing to the people that I work with. And so I, I went slow. Um, I think I had nine transactions my first year, which I was shooting for four, you know, just trying to start somewhere. Um, I learned a ton for sure. And, um, you know, I, I'm still, a newbie, you know, on that side of things. So I'm still, s- still kind of, you know, going slow with it, to be honest, because I, I don't just want as much sales as I can get. I want to make sure that the people that I'm working with, like I am the best person for them to talk to. So I've gotten referrals. Um, I just actually did one of the cards that I'll show you later um, about inheriting real estate. So I just got something from that. Um, so, you know, it's kind of, I'm trying to kind of go slow and steady. My farm is actually very small right now. You know, my goal obviously is to increase that, but I don't want like a hyper growth situation either that I'm not prepared for. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, this direct mailing that you were doing for agents and now are starting to do for yourself. I mean, how much, and it, it, you know, going back to that initial story you told, um, you know, how much of the designing of the card really, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, so many times I see cards that even come to my mailbox and it's mm-hmm. the same just listed card. And, you know, I get five or six of them in a month and they all look exactly the same. So how important is it to really uh, determine what you want your message to be? So it's so, it, it's so important. Um, my whole philosophy behind it, I agree. Um, just, li- I want just listed and just sold and production cards. Like here's all the things, the sales I've done. I'm not saying they don't work and that they're not valuable because they are. And a lot of the work that we do at the printing company is that, but that is not a strategy overall. In my opinion, there's such a better way to go about it. And I'm so eager to share it with people, you know, because I honestly, when I do, I do a lot of like lunch and learns at, offices for agents. And I, the first thing I say to them is don't do this unless you're going to commit to it. Like don't spend a dime. I will, I will tell you, like, just go another way, do something else, make phone calls, call expired, you know, don't do this unless you're going to do it this way. That's how serious I am about it. Because the, what's the point if it's not going to get you what you're looking for and just listed and just sold are, it's, it's not, I found, fa- I've found it's not the way to do it. There's a much, much better way. Right. So let's dive into that way. Let let me hear, you know, what you found over these years working with these agents and then now, you know, doing it for yourself. Absolutely. So there's three reasons why direct mail doesn't work. Everybody seems to have tried it, dip their toe in it. Mo- most of them, um, the big agents, the, the, the ones that are just starting out. There's three reasons it doesn't work. Any idea what they are? Uh, probably because, you know, there's a lot of a lot of mail coming to people. And a lot of different people doing it. And then, you know, I have to imagine that people don't give it time to work. Okay. All, all good points. So the first point is agents is they're not consistent. So what they do is they get a listing or something and they, they go, Oh, we're going to let all the neighbors know about this listing, which is great. It's not a bad thing. It's just the chances of at that moment, a neighbor wanting to sell, like you're, you're sort of lowering your chances of, of actually getting a response, which is the whole reason you're sending the card in the first place. So believe it or not, inconsistency is the number one reason it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Number two is they don't stay home. I like to call it. They get a listing in this town. So now they're, they're sending cards over here. Then they get a listing in this town because, you know, they're licensed in the whole state and people, you know, they get referrals from all over. So they drop a card here and they drop a card there and then they go direct mail doesn't work. So you got to stay home. You're going to pick a spot. I don't care where it is. If it's where you get most of the listings, go there. If it's where you live and you're known and you, and you, uh, volunteer and you went to school and your kids went to that school, go there. Like, I don't care where you go, but you're going to pick a spot and you're going to stay there. I, I just had, I just had this happen to someone. I was um, telling an agent, I the same exact thing. She's been doing it, been doing it. Then she decides not to do it anymore. Cause the third thing is it takes a while. 
This is something, you know, you have to, that's why I said you got to commit to it or don't even get started. So she mailed for a few months to uh, the area she wanted to reach and then she stopped. Fine, whatever you want to do, like pointless now. I feel like, I feel bad, you know, like if, anyway. So she gets this listing, this million dollar listing and um, she asked me to do the open house for her. So I did it and guy comes in, a buyer, and he's from where she farmed, where she used to farm. I'm like, oh my God, had she kept going? And so what she should have done was sent that listing to her farm. Hey, I have this, this million dollar listing. It's not in the farm, but we're, the whole point of direct mail is to get in front of your farm, teach the people in front of you what you do, who you have and how you can help them. It was like a mother, beautiful, like mother daughter situation. And this guy, his parents are mo moving from Boston. Like it was the perfect situation he, and he could afford it. Like, oh, it was such a missed opportunity. I'm like, oh, you know, it makes me crazy. Right. So, yeah. Um, so, so, and the third thing is what you talked about. Everyone's getting these just listed and just sold. And that's fine. But there's so many real estate issues and problems that people have that no one's talking about. That's what, they, that's what, as soon as they see just sold, they're like, yeah, another house sold. Maybe if it's their neighbor, they're like, oh, what, what's my neighborhood going for? But I want to elevate that. I want you to talk about, you know, problems, real estate problems that people have in your area. For example, you know, should I move my mom? You know, my mom is older. I don't know. What am I going to do with all the stuff she's accumulated in her house for the last 40 years? Like these are problems and you know how to solve them. You have a whole team of people. You know, you've got movers, you've got declutterers, you've got dumpster people, you know, if necessary, you've got painters, you have everything and they are clueless and they don't want their mom's house. But you're not talking about that in your direct mail. You're going, I just sold some. I just listed some. Here's everything. I Here's my award. Here's this. And that's all great. But where's the meat of the stuff people, the help people actually need? So that's, you know, that's one of them. Um, families in transition. I mean, as terrible as it is, you know, it's, I think it's somewhere around the 50% range. These people need help, you know, regardless of what the transition is, whether it's a death or a divorce or whatever, you know, if a family is transitioning in any way, they need help. So if you send a card out that talks about helping people that are going through a transition, you have a much higher chance of getting a response, inheriting. You know, I just did it in, in my farm. Girl's father just died. Ter it's terrible. But now she inherited his house. So the card talks about what to do when you inherit a house. So it's a way to stand out. Like, yes, there are other, you know, agents are using direct mail, but they're not talking about and these, this is what they do every day and it's not what they're putting in their cards you know it's their expertise and it's actually the help that people want to hire them for so all i'm doing is trying to get them to understand that you know right. through right. their absolutely. direct mail right absolutely so when you um do start working with an agent on their um direct mail marketing campaign is it something that you really do uh kind of sit down with them and say okay what is your expertise and what do you what are you known for and what do you what do you want to be known for because that's what we really want to uh display on these marketing pieces absolutely it's imperative you know otherwise we're just sending out stuff you know and hoping for the best um absolutely that's what i do I have one who's, she's actually, um, she's the number one agent in her area and she's a staging expert. Not only is she an expert, she loves it. It's where her passion is. You know what I mean? So that's what we got to talk about because there are tons of people out there whose homes certainly could use staging and the, the, the value of staging, you know, no one, no one puts that in their direct mail. And then we also did for her, you know, that's the, the number one. It's, it's great to, to say your status as a number one agent if you're explaining what the benefit of that is to the receiver. That's the part that gets missed. I'm the number one. Okay, that could be good or bad, actually. You know what I mean? So it's imperative that you say, and this is why you should go with me. You know, so we kind of take the, the initial and dive deep into what is the benefit here for the receiver? Because otherwise, you, it's, you really shouldn't do it. <laughs> right. And, and I, you know, with the staging example, I mean, I can see, I can picture, you know, a nice big card, you know, with a cross section with, you know, the, 
the room or something unstaged and then what she has done and then the, you know, how much more money it was sold for or something. Exactly. That's a, I mean, that's a pretty easy campaign to put together if you are, you know, a staging expert. That's correct. It's not even that hard. It's just a different way of looking at what you're doing. You know, a lot of the agents even do their own. They they use Canva or some other program or they have a um, VA that does it or, you know, if they've got a graphic designer they're working with, like, I don't care as long as the message that you're getting, you know, that's kind of our motto here. It's like getting the message through what message are you trying to get through? And I, I just don't think they think that way, which is why I am trying to do everything I can to get them to understand the value of what they bring as an agent and the help that they can give the people they're reaching if they just do it a little bit different than they've done in the past. Right. When you are, you know, you talked about, um, you know, they're designing their own pieces and things like that. Um, when it comes to the actual messaging on the piece, you know, there has to, um, sometimes, you know, you don't want things to be too cluttered right. on the actual. So how do you balance that up? Like getting, getting the message across that you want to portray to your, you know, your farm versus, you know, just having too much information and things getting lost on the actual marketing. Yeah. Piece. And the other problem is, is um, some of the agents follow the design like trends, I'll say, and it's not legible. I don't know if you've seen some of the newest stuff. It's very pretty. A lot of it's very feminine, but it's so pale that it's difficult, not only in a card, but online, you know, because we definitely, definitely have to be in both places online and off. So the color matters, you know, um, that, that definitely matters. The design matters. And a lot of them want to do it themselves and it looks like they did it themselves. So while, while I'll have this conversation with an agent, just like I am with you, I can only go so far. Like if you're happy with it, I'll make suggestions. If you're open to it, I always ask, like, are, are you open to a suggestion? You know, I give them um, the size requirements they need so that they'll qualify for the program and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we also offer designs. I am so serious about it. And I, and I give them to the big brands for free. I go here give this to your agents. Like that's, that's how serious I am. So if you, if you go to the website, you'll see there's a page. Um, I think it's called EDDM for realtors. There's, I think 32 designs on there done by professional graphic designers that they're welcome to. Right. And, you know, before we go on much further, tell me, you know, I don't think we've actually touched on the name of your, the business or you oh, know, sure. the actual website. Um, it's L and B printing. We're actually celebrating our 50th year in business, um, July 5th of this year. So it was, it was started by my, my family, like I, I mentioned earlier. So yeah, we've been around a long time. Uh, that's amazing. And do, do you service uh, mainly your local area or, or is it you know countrywide? How does that work? Well, so it is a commercial printing company. So we don't just deal with realtors. I happen to just be very passionate about it. You know, um, you know, the, the, the deliverable is the, the printed product, but the passion behind it is, is why I spend time like this talking about marketing. But yeah, they deal with, um, all kinds of companies, local businesses, Fortune 500. You know, they ship all over the country, out, out, outside of this country. So whatever, um, whatever people need. We do a lot in HVAC, a lot of trade work, you know, anybody who's trying to get the word out about their business. And in addition, they do, you know, regular types of printing that helps businesses run from day to day, you know, from business cards, flyers. Uh, We do brochures for agents as well, presentation folders and some large format work as well, uh, like banner stands if, if people are going to events, um, table throws, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's yeah. full service. Awesome. Very cool. Well, so back to, um, you know, these marketing campaigns, I think a lot of times, you know, and just, you know, my experience in marketing and and these kind of things, um, having, you know, not just having that one piece that goes out that one time, Mm -hmm. but almost, you know, have a year worth of a message that you're kind of building upon and adding more information to, I think, you know, do you, do you work with agents to do that, to have, you know, several pieces that go out over time that kind of portray yeah, that same message? Yes. It's funny. I'm, I'm so passionate about that part of it. I almost don't want to let you work with me. I, I'm serious. Like, I don't want you to do it. 
I'm, I don't, don't do it if you're not going to do it that way. So that is how we have it set up. You don't have to, you know, I, you can't make people, but I flashing red lights, like don't do this unless you're going to do it this way. I'm that sure that it's not worth it. Otherwise it's not, you know, maybe you'll get something that's not a strategy, you know, and it's not, you know, EDDM, every door direct mail is the least expensive way to get your message out. I mean, there's no cheaper way to do it, but it's, if it's not making you money, it's costing you money. So if there's a known strategy, people have been using direct mail for years and years and years. If there's a known strategy that works and it's full commission, you're not having to pay, you know, whoever, um, 30%, you know, cause you are getting calls from a site or something. This is full commission. You're getting known by the area you want to be known in. Follow the steps. I know it's like, I feel like a, almost like a coach, like a nutrition coach, like, come on, just, you know, eat the blueberries. Like it's, that's sort of what it's like. And you'd be surprised they're busy and they just kind of want to do what's quick and fast. And they're excited if they get a listing and they want the neighbors to know, and they know they're going to do a great job, but that's not a strategy. It's great. It's great. And I'm happy for them, but it's, it's not how you use direct mail. So yes, if they're committed, I'm all in. And I will do everything I can to make sure that we, we do everything. I mean, we'll print it, we'll band it, we'll tray it, and we'll deliver it to the post office or ship it if it's, you know, somewhere else in the country, UPS ground. And it's, that's, don't do it otherwise. So if somebody wants to do it, I'm all in. I will, I will look at everything you're doing. I'll give you everything I have to offer. I'll review it. I'll make suggestions. You know, we'll go over the plan. I make sure I'm available. So yes, absolutely. When you are putting these marketing campaigns and suggesting, uh, you know, these campaigns, what's your frequency of send that you think people monthly. should be doing monthly? I think you should do it monthly. I mean, if you're a new agent, you know, it seems that getting up, getting known faster, doing a little bit more as a new agent, I would recommend because they don't know you, you know, and it takes a while. It's like doing a Facebook post, you know, you see it and then you're like, wait, I've seen this before type of thing. You know, it takes a little bit of momentum. So in the beginning, um, you know, the first eight weeks, you might want to do more to, to get noticed sooner. Um, but for the, the agents that have been around a while, I, I highly recommend monthly. And even if you're the number one person, like you want to stay there, you know, you, you don't want to end up with somebody who's out marketing you. I have that happening to two agents right now. She's getting crushed because the girl's like, here I am, here I am, here I am, here I want, I want to help you. I want to help, you know? So definitely monthly. And honestly, I, there's stats out there that it's, it year round. You know, I know that there's a, a selling season, but you don't just get sales during the selling season. You know, people are thinking about buying and selling and family issues or aging parents all year long. You know, and if you hit right at the spring market, they don't know you like where you been all weekend, you know, and, and budget is another thing you have to, I'd rather see you do less more often than some big campaign that you can't afford to keep going. So if we have to go down to one carrier route in the town you live in to get you off the ground, you know, to whatever it is, 250, 500 homes, then that's what we're going to do. And then you grow from there. Like even me, I do one, you know, I have people who do whole towns and whole counties because they're huge and they've been in the business for 40 years and they want to stay at the top. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, um, I think, you know, you talk about the frequency and uh, being able to, you know, as markets change and we're always, you know, the real estate market is constantly in the news. So that's one of those things that mm. people are always hearing about, whether it's good or bad or there's, you know, a down market or whatever it is, um, sure. you know, as your, uh, you know, as your your piece comes and you're you're touching on a specific need, you know maybe you are targeting those people that are going through life changes, mm. and yeah, that they still need to sell regardless of what the market's doing, and so you're getting in front of those people, and I think um, by showing off that side of your business that you're there to help no matter what, and it's not just you know these listings that you have or maybe you know they do have you know people that they need to help relocate or all those kind of things. Right. You know, it's when people think about direct, you know, EDDM, you think you're, 
you know, it's like the shotgun, you know, the shotgun approach to a specific farm, but really it's to get in front of one singular person at that moment when they are needing you the most. Right. And because you don't know when that moment is, you kind of have to be going, if this is happening, I'm here. If this is happening, I'm here. When this happens, I'm here. And I have a plan to help you. It, and sometimes it's not you. Like you send out a card talking about a family in transition and you're not going through that transition, but your best friend is or your aunt or, you know, somebody else. And it's a card that actually speaks to somebody about something that's going on with their life that real estate is involved, you know? So it's, it's just an overall better way to, to do it. And it can be done with social media as well. You know, the same thing. I see tons of same thing. They, they go from direct mail to just listed on social media, you know, talk, let's help people. You know, we do help people by selling and, and listing and all that. But you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, let's right. show them where the value really is. Right. Absolutely. When, um, you know, talking about your uh, the area that you are choosing to to farm to, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of your tips for picking a place that, you know, is going to, uh, you know, speak to your audience or get you the most, you know, uh, kind of view that you would like and, and kind of build on to that, you know, sphere that you're starting to build? Um, so, uh, you know, you have to worry, you have to start with budget. It just, first thing is, you know, what can I afford to do? Because we can't do too much. We can't do, you know, too little. We got to find out what, what works for you so we can get you business and move it up from there. Um, but in terms of picking a farm, I, I kind of see it as two ways. One is, you know, you definitely want to get out in front of people where you can help them, you know? So if that proximity is, is clearly an issue, you know, yes, you're, you're licensed in a, a giant state somewhere in the country, but you really, where would, where do you want the business to come from? You know, you want to be able to drive there and not have it take a day and a half. You know, you want to be able to go and help every time, you know, something's happening on the property um, and inspections happening, you know, so being in an area where you are the most helpful is where I definitely suggest you go. And then, you know, there's demographic information available too about farms. Like what, what are the people in this area dealing with? You know, what's the age of the people, you know, because if it's, you know, talking about my area, you know, if it's Hoboken or Jersey City, you know, there's a lot of young kids out there right outside of New York City, you know, probably not going to be talking about families in transition and that kind of thing to them. You know, maybe you're talking about um, upsizing for them, you know, but if you're in a sleepy town somewhere where the there are a lot of, you know, baby boomers, you know, maybe you're talking about downsizing. You know, so, yeah, you have definitely have to target and, and what you specialize in. What are you good at? You know, do you do well with the states? Like what, wh where do you, who do you, who are you as an agent? And, and where are those people mostly located that could benefit most from your services? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the other things we, you know, you touched on is, you know, you brought it up as one of the big three reasons why people, uh, you know, fail with EDDM is the inconsistency. And I think a lot of times that comes from uh, not getting immediate results from this type of marketing. And it's, mm -hmm. it's on a lot of marketing. I see the same thing when people, you know, like, Oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to pump out a whole bunch of YouTube videos and really kind of get my video marketing going. Mm -hmm. And they do a lot of work and they don't get a call the next day and they get frustrated when you are speaking to an agent or even another business um, out there what kind of, how do you kind of help them, you know, have realistic expectations of, you know, when phone calls should start coming in or even really just the success that they should be getting? Yeah. Um, it's funny. This is where I really feel like a coach. It's almost like, you know, when agents deal with buyers and they get frustrated because they're, they just can't get it. And you're like, stay in there. We're going to get one. You know, like it's sort of that same feeling where the agents are like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, and I, that's where I reiterate, this is what we said we were going to do. We know it's going to take 
12 to 18 months. It's, it's, we're going for the long haul. You know, we're not looking to be an agent short term. You know, we're looking to build over time. It takes time to build people's trust and confidence in, in you and your ability and your message. So, um, it's sort of a lot of coaching that, that happens, you know, but then when they see it, you know, and they're always thankful. And I will say there are some agents for whatever reason that get a better, better response. You know, direct mail can only do so much. You have to have a good reputation. People have to, you know, like what you're saying. They have to know that everything else, you know, it's a package deal, you know, same with any kind of marketing or social media you know, who you are and who you represent yourself as. And if you get those opportunities, are you able to close them? You know, so there's a lot, there is a lot that goes into it. Yeah. When it comes to, um, so on your pieces and for the agents out there, what do you, what do you think works best as a way for people to either get more information about you or reach out? Do you suggest having uh, like landing pages set up for people to where they can go and put their information or, you know, just a a straight up phone number that they can then call you? Sure. Um, I also recommend that to the agents too. All of our designs have QR codes that go right to their contact page because you got to put them both on. And we'll also give an image that they can use for their social media as well so that their branding is the same both on and offline. Um, but I'm happy to talk to any agent anywhere in the country. Um, I'm happy to do Zooms with people. I'm, I tend to be sort of like a motivational speaker in this area because they need it. They need, you know, they're, they're worrying about buying and selling. They need someone to go, you've got this, you've got valuable information, you know, so happy to, to teach anytime. Um, but our website is um, lbprintinginc.com. And like I said, there's a, pay, a link right on the homepage. It says EDDM for Realtors. And the whole process is listed uh, there. It kind of says what what this is about, how we think it works, what it costs, and then all the designs are there. So what they do is they kind of give me their information once, you know, the headshot, the contact information, their contact page on their website. And we'll set we set everything up for free. I have an initial consultation with them. I want to talk about who they are. And there's a, a information there to pick 12, you know, pick 12. And if there's not one there that you are, that you see, we'll make it for you. Yeah. So whatever is going to get you to be successful, we want to partner with you to do that. Right. Awesome. And then when you are uh, working with these agents, um, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, their actual, you know, tracking of their success. I think that's a really important thing too, whenever you're doing uh, any type of marketing, because I think, you know, like it, you can get frustrated if you don't see something in the first, you know, couple of days or whatever. But mm-hmm. if you have a really good system for tracking where uh, these contacts are coming from and you see that, hey, you know, in three, in a three month span, we did get several phone calls and it, or, you know, some other referrals. And I think mm-hmm. having that, that big log of, you know, all the, you know, I think just having all that data there and you can start seeing where calls are coming from. I think it helps pe- keep people motivated, you know, for the long term in this type Absolutely. of marketing. It's imperative to know where you're, where the business is coming from, for sure. So asking and um, you can even do a trackable QR code, you know, so you can see like how much activity am I really getting here? So for sure. Con- and it does help. It's almost like a dieting, you know, when you see something happen, you know, you're motivated to keep going another week. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to talk with us about this and we will, uh, certainly be putting your, your contact information, your website on the, um, uh, you know, in the, uh, the show description so people can check it out. And I think, you know, this is definitely a, um, uh, a marketing avenue that, you know, I think sometimes people don't give, as much uh, consideration as they should for, again, you said, you know, it's, it's one of the the most cost efficient ways to get your message out there. And then again, it, it, it's right in front of their face when it's delivered. That's right. It's tangible, you know, it's something they can go, Oh, let me hold on to this. This may be happening, you know, to me at some time for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much and congratulations on 50 years of uh, in business. That's awesome. (laughs) Thank you so much.
I want to thank Christy for joining us today and think it's really smart to address specific real estate needs in your direct mailings to show your expertise. Remember, if you're interested in learning more about what LMB printing can do for you, check out the episode description. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode, but remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.